to it, and welcome to our 40th Unity 3D tutorial. So, this tutorial is going to be quite long, so I'm going to split it up into parts because um, last time I tried recording it, which failed, it ended up around 40 minutes. So, that's not a very good YouTube tutorial. So, I'm going to split it up for now. But um, the code isn't actually that long, it's just explaining the code to the people who want to learn, which is longer. Um, if you don't want me to explain the code, you may as well just go to the description and get it from the code sheet. But, yeah. So, um, to start, I'm going to show you the loading screens, which I forgot from the past two tutorials. So, the first one we've got is a big tree for our normal trees. Um, the palm tree, which is the trees you see here. And then, for the today's tutorial, we have vehicles. So, I've got this basic Humvee. It's not the exact same one I've got in the game, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so, yes, I've converted all three of them to loading screens, and here they are. So, here's the Humvee. It says... The H1 Humvee is a military standard issued mode of transportation. It is fast, strong and very agile. It can overtake most civilian vehicles. It also has armour plating and can withstand multiple blows from most weaponry. So that opens up for our game a new aspect because we have um, vehicles now. So yeah, so that's in the description. The next one is the palm tree. The trees of the realm come from all over the universe. The common earth realm tree has sand coloured bark wood and can easily be chopped down for resources. So that's that one. And then the big tree is pretty much similar. That one. Um, the trees of the realm co ca came or come from all over the universe. The common earth realm tree has brown bark wood and can easily be chopped for resources. So it's pretty much the same, just change the colour of the wood, but it works. So we have another tree. Um, the outlining isn't that good, but these loading screens are just basic. So I've imported all of them, and I have also been on the internet and got some models from the 3 3D model site, so we can close that, um, which are in the description again. I just went to the vehicles section and got two cars. So I got a car 84 sedan, which I'll show you in a minute, um, which is here. Which is a big, big car, so I'll have to resize it. But as you can see, it's not textured correctly. Well, it is, but it's probably messed up in the model. So what I'm going to do is just click it and have a look at the parts it's got. So it's got one part, which has all the materials. So the no-name is a grass texture, because we've called it grass for some reason. So what we're just going to do is drag the four cars onto it, and hopefully that works. Does that look right? If not, we drag something else on. Uh, try the environment one. That's better. And um, the glass one, can we change that? Nope. Try again. Try it with the darker glass. Okay, so apparently the glass doesn't want to change, but we have glass. Unless we change it to transparent, we could try that. Because we need to make it look good. Compared to Bane and stuff, it'd be nice to have an imported one. So you can't see this, this is off screen, but go down, click transparent, and I'm going to click bump diffuse. And stick a. Okay, that doesn't want to work either, but we have a car, a basic car. So as you can see, it's absolutely huge. So what we're going to do is select it, and then change it to around 0 0.05. Make it really, really small. Well smallish. Right, where's it gone? There. So we're going to go to our side view and zoom in. Um, where's Shao Kahn? He is here. Oh, I think that's a little small. Might be too small. Wait, actually, is that right? When you stand up to a car I think that's about right, actually, because it, it looks small here, but if you go up and stand next to a car, that's roughly around the same size, because you always stand over top of car. Yeah, I'll just keep it like that. So we've done that one, and now we're going to do the Humvee. So we'll drag the Humvee out, and this texture's messed up too, but this should be easily fixed. So we'll look at the items. It's got one again. So we need a no name, so we'll just drag that on. Click. Um well try again. Just drag it onto here. Well that one works, so we'll resize this to the same again. 
Hopefully it works. Where's he gone? It's all the way down there. Click it. That's about right. But as you can see, it's changed this one here. So what we're going to have to do to fix that is, we'll get to coding in a minute. Um, what we're going to do is go into the Humvee and create a new material in here. So we'll, actually they've got materials here. Well for the Humvee then we can just change the materials. So select this. And in the materials folder we'll just drag it to the each one. When it decides to do it. Ah, okay, I'm just going to leave it like that because it's just annoying. We'll fix it in another tutorial. But there we have two cars, so we're going to position them out of the way, like so. And if you look at the pivot points, the pivot point on this one, if the blue means forward, means that way is forward, so that car's going to travel sideways. And this one might travel backwards, so we need to fix that, but again, another tutorial. So we need to now add some items to each of these vehicles. So click on one, hold c control or command and click on the other, say select both. And what I'm going to do is first go to component physics and add a rigid body. So it's got gravity and mass. So then I'll add a physics character controller because we want to control it with our character. No, we want to control it like a character, that's it. So what we're going to do is just do one of them for now. And um, we're going to zoom in click our character controller and position it right. Um, you can, uh, For the moment this is just going to do for a basic character controller but what we're going to do is just basically expand the radius of it so it just basically touches each side like so. So that it won't fall fully th through the floor but it does look right and we'll change the height down okay which can't so we have it a big ball in the middle of it so if we were to control that it would just land and not move um, do you want to fix it? Just click fix now. There we go. Fixed. Um, we'll just do the other car while we're here as well then. Because it might look better. This one shouldn't be hard. So radius, about there. Move the height up. There. That's it. So that's that one done. So now we have two vehicles. All good. So we'll click, drag them apart from each other and stuff, and now we begin the long and tedious scripting. So if this tutorial does just randomly cut off at some point, the next one will be in the series, because by the time this one's uploaded, the next one will be uploaded straight after, no problems. Um, give or take 10 minutes, but yeah. So we'll first go to our scripts folder and create a new folder, and call this Vehicles. And in this one we'll call it um, Get in vehicle. In this tutorial all we're going to do is basically make it so you can get in the vehicle and get out of it. Um, the getting out of it is a bit glitchy at times like you can fall through the floor but that's easily fixed. Um, so now that we've done that we are, we are going to do is open it up. Yep. There we go. So, drag it over here so you can see it. There. So first what we need to do is we need a way so we can tell um, if he's in the vehicle, if our character's in the vehicle or not. So this is simply done with a boolean or bool boolean, boolean, call it whatever you like. And I'm going to make this a static variable, so it's open to our old game, and we'll call it player in vehicle. And this will be a false because he's default not in a vehicle. So now we can enable that, disable it when he's doing it, because when he's in a car, we want that to say so he can't start firing because it'll blow the car up, and that's not what we want. So yeah. Um, now that we've done that, we need a range detection system. So we've done this before many, many times. Simply done, if you can just remember. If not, it'll be here. And I'm going to create a variable for the distance, what we can get in. So we'll call this enter distance equal 10. So 10 unity units, if he's in range of it, then it will um, get him in the vehicle, which is easy. So we'll create, go to our function update and we'll create a new variable called player. This will be a vector 3, which is x, y, z coordinates. And this will equal to, now we need to put our character's position here. So again, we need another variable because we'll be using our character quite a lot. So we'll just make another one called transforms. And this will be our char, and it will be a game object. Like so. Easily done. Um, we'll also create another one now for our main camera, because we'll be changing the properties on that quite a lot as well. So we'll call this main 
camera and this will be a variable type of a camera which means um, the script knows it's a camera it can easily access its properties and change it as it wishes um, so in here we're just going to type um, char equals game object dot find character so it finds our character assigns it to that game object so whenever we start we don't need to assign every single vehicle because that would be pointless so now we've done that we're going to assign our main camera so we just type main camera equals game object dot find and now we need the name of our main camera which is main camera unexpected token yep that's fine we're still working on it like so and we may have to put dot camera on the end but we'll leave it for now so we need our position of our character so char dot transform dot position it's called char for character or play you can put whatever you like but yeah but now we need a way to take away the character's position away from the object this script's attached to which will be each car so um, we could type var um, distance I don't know, quite anything you like um, this will be a vector 3 again but it will equal our player player's transform position take away the transform dot position of this game object so I think that's spelled wrong is it? nope so that's done now we'll make an if statement if distance dot magnitude equals no is less than our enter distance so basically if he's in range then we activate it let him get in a car but else if then we can copy all this here because we're just going to rewrite it all again if it's distance dot magnitude is more than enter distance then we don't want it on so this will work for only this script but yeah so that's that done now we need a way to tell if it's actually in range or not we've got a range detection system but it simply says are you in range yes right do this if not don't do this simple but the best way to do this is actually use a boolean again so we'll call it var in range equals false you can just put the code in here but um, it just looks neat if you put it below and it's only one variable so we could even make this private a private var we don't need it and if it is it in range in range equals true so is in range is is it not nope so we'll make it false so now we can walk up to the car it will turn on walk away turn off simple as that now um, if in range in range equals true double equals then he will get in car simple well we're going to put that code here now anyway so you don't need to put that um, then what we do is you can just walk up and get straight out of the car but that's not what we want because if you imagine that on say a game there's like 20 cars around you walk up to each one you go in straight away that won't be good we need a key or a label so you can go in and out so we're going to type if input dot get key up we use up again and we'll decide what that key is in a minute um, so what key do we want um, we've used E up already on our firing so um, we'll use enter now if you look at keyboard the enter key in computer terms it's actually called return so you just type return um, I don't know why they've called it enter I think it was just enter a backspace but return a backspace was like confusing people kind of thing so it's return you can also use it for shift but you've got to specify whether you want right shift or left shift you can't just put shift so yeah so that's that done and now what we're going to do is put if um, player in vehicle so we need get in vehicle dot player in vehicle equals true then get in car and then we'll copy all this again paste it in but change it to an else if so else if if it's equal to false get out so base so the to sum up um, if he's, he walks up to the car if he's let um, as close as 10 then in range equals true it'll keep checking in range is true then as soon as we press that enter key and let go it will check if he's already in a car if he isn't, 
then he will get in. If he's not, then he will get out. Is that right? No, we've done that backwards. If it equals true, so he's already in a car, he will get out of it. If he's if he's not in a car, so if it equals false, then he will get in. So it's get in, get out. Simple as that. You can do it other way, but it seems a bit backwards to me. So yeah. So first we'll do the get in car, because that's the most important thing. Um, so to do this first, um, so if it's false, we want to make it true to say, right, he's in a car now. So that's our first thing, what we do. So true, yep, he's in a car now, all good. Um, but then it'll carry on doing this script because it's already halfway through it, it's not going to stop. So what we need to do now is make a movement script. So we're gonna only going to do a basic one, so it's not going to be revs and gears and stuff like that. It will only be basic like our character, but it will work. So to do this is very simple. Um, game object to camera, knew that one would mess up. So we're just going to cut that one, because we don't want that one there. Get rid of the camera thing, and no errors. Yep, there we go. So in our vehicles folder, we're going to create a new JavaScript, and we'll call this vehicle, in fact we'll call it car movement, because we'll be changing it. Open that up, and now we could write the whole script out, but then it would be twice as long as tutorial. So we're just going to open up our characters, copy everything, and then paste it in here. Now, if we were to run that, we'd get errors because it's animation. We don't want a jumping car because it look weird. Well, you can have one if you want, but so I'm just going to cut all that out, take it out like that, and we're going to get rid of the jump speed because it's a pointless variable. We need speed, we need gravity, we need rotate speed, which is good. Um, the speed we can just increase. We'll say like 20, yeah, because you want a fast one. Rotate speed. Um, We'll set it to 1, because I've got a feeling a car doesn't turn as fast as a person, yeah. So car movement is that name script. So we're going to attach this to both our vehicles. So just select them both, on V, and assign them. Boom. But if we were to run it now, you would actually see we could control all three of them, which is not what we want. So this is kind of funny, so I'm going to show you. Tick, tick, tick. Come on. There we go. So if we turn now, as you can see, we're driving all every car. It's not what we want, but as you can see, it is kind of funny. We can, like, if we bring them this way, they will come much faster. Okay, they disappeared now. They're somewhere driving, somewhere out there. But yeah, it is driving, so it does work, as you can see. Um, so, what we need to do, actually, though, is to stop that, we're going to actually disable the scripts just by unticking it. Check that they're both done, else we'll come into an error. And I'm going to rename this, because I don't like the name of this. So, we'll call it 84 underscore Cdan. There we go. Much better name. So, now that we've done that, we need a way to access each of these cars and then enable the car movement script so it's available to move but then we need to disable all the scripts on the character so it, the camera's not following, we can't activate the inventory and stuff like that because we don't want none of that stuff. So this is simply done, we've done this before, if you can guess how to do it you can have a cookie. Um, if you don't like cookies you can have a gold star. If you don't like gold stars you don't get anything. So um, this is easily done by using the get component code which is the best thing in the world. We all know that. So um, we first type game object dot get component po component. Yep. Um, and we're going to get the game object basically activate gets this script, this object the script's attached to. So it'll be our car. And then it we, wants to get the car underscore movement script. And then it wants to enable it, which is enabled equals true. So it now enables it, so if we go up to it, press enter, and get in, it will make it true, so we can now control it. Simple. Um, now, if we were to play it and get into the car, say we got the camera to follow it, and we try to drive around, the character would stay in the same spot. And because if we disable the character, he won't move, it's not what we want, we want the character to follow it. So the easiest way to do it is to get the pa parent, so... 
I'm going to use the Humvee as an example. The parent of the vehicle is the Humvee uh, um, folder or parent. That's the parent. Everything inside is a child. The character is a parent to everything inside. So if we were to move the character into the Humvee as a child and parent, we could move it. And it would follow the Humvee as we drive with it. However, if we were to do it now, it would always follow the Humvee, which is not what we want. We want it to follow whichever car it's going into. And what we can basically do is script it and tell it to change the parent of the character, so ev all everything here, into whatever car we're going to. So if you don't understand, you'll see in a minute, because I'll show you as we play. But if we were to type char, so our character, dot transform, so we're changing it, dot parent. Um, lowercase parent um, and then we'll make this equal game object dot transform so the transform of this object now that's it so we're going to go and test it even though it's probably going to fail um, please don't be full screen I hope it's not full screen there we go so we'll go up to it and as you can see they're not moving no more which is good so we'll go up to it and press enter Actually, no, we need to assign it. That's a good thing. So, we'll select our car and our Humvee and assign the getting vehicle. Boom. Um, so, they should assign you to everything. So, that'll be good. Easy. Alright, we'll try again. Go up to it and press enter or return. So, as you can see, we've got in, but he's fell down now. But And I'll explain that why in a minute. But as you can see, the character has been moved inside of the Humvee, not the sedan or sedan, whatever you call it the character has been moved and the reason it's been moved is because it's inactive if we were to stick it here and then move it back up it wouldn't but basically since the Humvee is floating there the character was on the floor already so as we if we just drag it in as we did it and the Humvee landed the character went through the floor and then dropped because it's apparent that's where he's been told to so drag that up so if you don't understand that, no worries, um, it works, so we're happy. The same thing will happen if we go to the sedan. Um, the reason the camera drops as well is because, there you go, it does it again, look. If we jump and do it, you'll be able to go into it, but the reason the camera follows it is because we've not told the camera to change yet. Um, so we're going to make it change, simple. So what we do is type in camera dot main dot get component so basically camera component camera dot main searches our whole thing for the main camera so the main camera we have is this one it's called main camera so it will get that thing so we don't actually need this main camera dot variable so we can get rid of that one but yeah so um, get component it's getting the main camera so if I drag this across this one here and then it wants to get a component well we want to change the target of it to another thing so it can follow the car so here we need to activate the get the component of the smooth follow script so we type smooth follow one word because if you look at the script name it says smooth space follow but if you look at the script actual name it's smooth follow one word smooth follow yep um, so as you can see if you put a space in there you would most likely get an error um, because it's expecting a bracket at the next space or after a script name. So, and then what do we want to change on the smooth follow? Well, we want to change the target. Well, that's the first thing. So, what we're going to set the target as? We want it to follow game object dot transform. We want it to follow this game object. So, if we tried it, it would work, but it'll be really dodgy because well, I'll just show you. Okay, I'm guessing I'm going to cut the script up around now, but as soon as you drop back in, it will continue from here. So, see you in a minute. And you're back. So, as you can see, magic. Magic power of internet. So, if we were to try it now, as you can see, it follows our script. So, we can technically, we've technically done it now. But I'm not leaving you like that, don't worry. I'm not like that. I won't leave you for some crap. But as you can see, we're driving a backwards Hummer. It is cool. Um... That's it. But as you can see, this camera is way too low. So the best thing to do is to increase the height of it to something you want. So around 10, I think we'll do it. And then the distance, what do we want it as? Let's move it back. Mm. 30 is a bit much. I'm going to go 25. So we want 
25 distance, 10 height. So exact same process as this. Copy, paste, paste. And we don't want the target, we want the height. So if you look in the variable names of this, I already know it. It is distance, distance. I've been spelling distance wrong. Oops, never mind. And height, like so. So what do we want to set the distance to? We want it 30. In fact, no, we want it 25, that's it. And what do we want the height? We want the height to be 10. That's it, so it's reset it back to the prop real properties, the correct properties. So now if we were to try it again, there's a lot of testing, but you've got to see if it works, haven't you? Because if we show big finale and then it doesn't work, we're getting the C down now. I'll just call it the 84. Get in. Don't worry about the character, as you can see. Looks much better. We can't collect them because only our characters are assigned to collect them. So we've got a slowish car, but it does move fast in our character. And he's looking at the character, that's why he's laying down. But there, we've got a much faster way to get in. So we we'll just park it in river. We can make it if he parks it in river, automatically get the character out. As you can see, that's one big problem. But we can fix that. So if press enter, nothing happens. We don't get back out. So first problem we're going to fix is stop the character from dropping. So um, if we look at the character's properties, as you can see, he's got many scripts. And the thing what's making him drop is gravity. What gives us gravity? The rigid body. So we could just untick gravity. Then he'd stop. Yeah. But then we'd have a floating Shao Kahn following the car. Not what we want. And we could also store fire and stuff. So we still don't want it. So the easiest way to do this is to type char.active equals false. Done. So now he won't fly anymore. But the type of char.active makes our character inactive it only makes that that parent act inactive so if we were to try it you'd see that only the parent would be inactive so if we click it we have a null reference exception what's that tree chops i really can't bother to fix that this tutorial so what we're going to do is just delete all the big growth trees we don't want it we'll fix that another time because that's just messing up with our character and stuff. Because it, we're trying to disable our character, but the tree chop scripts are constantly searching for the character. So press enter again, and as you can see, he's flo fly floating us. So we've got a work better working car. He stays still now. But if we check our 84 sedan, only the character's inactive. The actual model's still there. So how do we make it all inactive? Well, we're going to keep that there just for now. But what we're actually going to do, because if we were to make the whole character inactive, um, it would mess up our first person camera. Because then, it would, when it, we reactivate it, it will keep that on. So the best way to do it is to turn the char that active equals false, but then search for our Shao Kahn model and make that false, because that's the only thing what's showing. So, easiest way to do this is game... I think it's game object dot find, yeah. Game object dot find shall con. And in future tutorials, when we start changing characters, we can put them into a folder called um, character model, and then we just change that, and that's fixed. So it's not hard to do. And here's a new script for you. It's called set active recursively. Recursively. I can't say it, but I can spell it. Recur. Okay, apparently I can't spell it. Recursively. Recursively, yeah. So basically what that does is make everything from a parent false. Every single bit of it. So if you were to make, say, this false and click it, do you wish to deactivate all the children as well? The way we've set it is if we, we basically click only this game object, which is the parent. The set active recursively clicks that one where it deactivates all of it. So we just activate up to them as well. Yep. So now recursively, you do usually put equals false, but for this one you have to put bracket false. So we set on it auto false so it will hide it. So we can try it again and we're pretty much nearly done. We're coming to an end of it now. All we need to do is make it so you get back out. But yeah, that bit's easy. So we'll go up to it and click enter. Boom. Where's he gone? He's invisible. But it works. So now if we were to fly away, we've now got a proper car. Oops. Move, Shao Kahn. 
Uh, what we'll eventually do is make the wheels turn, make it look better and stuff. But now what we need to do is we can't get out. So we need to make him get out, which is really, really easy again. So what we're going to do is copy everything from here. Copy, copy, copy. And paste it into get out car. Um, then we're just going to change it. So is he in a vehicle? False, he's not. Sh should it have the car movement script enabled? Nope. Turn it off. The car transforms parent. We can't keep it in with the car, so we've got to change it. Now the easiest way to do this is type transform.parent equals null. And what null means is computer term for nothing. Not zero, it just doesn't exist, it doesn't have anything. So null for the parent is here, so it'll be its own parent here. So as you can see, no errors, yep. Um, child active, we want it to be active, yes. Do you want the model to be active, yep. So we change it to true. Right, what game mode target do we want it to follow? Well, we actually want it to follow our char.transform. So it's going to follow our character. Right, the distance of it. So we've already set it that up here. So it's 15 and 5. So the distance of it is 15 and the height is 5. However, we, we're going to face a big error now, which I'll show you in a minute. Which is still, yeah, it needs to be fixed, but it's good for now. So we're going to walk up to it um, and press enter. We're in. Press enter again and he falls through the floor. Now the reason this is because when we go up to it, if you look at the car, it is actually floating. So imagine the character staying exactly with the car. It'll fall through the floor. So the, you, the easy, easy way to fix this is you jump and press enter. Press enter and he falls through again. But it's, yeah, it's messed up. So the easiest way to do this is when he gets out of the car here, we need to change his height. So at the bottom, we're just going to type char dot transform dot position dot y. So the y axis up and down. We're going to change it to um, plus equals ten. Set fifteen to be safe. So he's going to increase his height by fifteen. So he should, in theory, spawn, increase height, then drop and land on the floor. You can do this with a spawn point, but this is just basic script for now. Press enter, enter again, and there you go, drop. So we can change that back down because 10 is a bit wild. 15, 10, we'll have a look at that. So this is the most requested script for anyone for my whole tutorials. Everyone's wanted cars, so here's your cars. Um, I know they're not moving, but the getting script, look, it works. Press enter, it drops out. Now, to prove it does work, we can go to the other car. There you go. Press enter. It drops out. Simple. Fixed. You can actually do this with anything. Um, you could pretty much drag one of these characters and do it with them, but that looks a bit stupid, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is just quickly increase the speed of them, because it's too slow. So, um, 20 to 40 and the Humvee slightly faster so we'll set for 50 and what we're eventually going to do is like we've done with our characters and inventory we're going to make a screen where it's got every single car's speed gravity and all that and everything so drive boom 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 now we can quickly explore our level um, let's go see Darth Vader we haven't seen him for ages no because he's disactivated but yeah so as you can see we need to return the rotating speed, but yeah. So if we were to press enter, there's a glitch. There is many glitches with getting out, but we'll fix that in another tutorial. So this is the 40th Unity tutorial, and um, 41st at the moment, but thanks for watching. I really hope you liked it. Any problems, comment below, and see you later.